The group two leader through qualifying is defending event champion E.J. Tackett. The young star from Indiana is one step away from the championship show at this year's PDA Tour Finals in Detroit. Bowling fans, it is time to resume the 2018 PBA Tour Finals from Thunderbolt Lanes in Allen Park, Michigan. Minutes from Detroit. Tonight we feature the Group 2 Step Ladder Semifinals for the world's best bowlers compete. To win Group 2 and make the championship show against Group 1 winner Jason Belmonte. EJ attacking the top seed in Group 2 after posting a 9-12 for full games. Followed by young screener star Jesper Svensson as the number 2 seed. Marshall Kent and Tommy Jones are the 3rd and 4th seeds. Once we get to the championship match, it'll be a two-game match, including a two-frame tiebreaker if necessary. Now let's meet our group two finalists with Master of Ceremonies, Dennis McCamery. Here are our four competitors for group two. The number four seed owns 18 PBA Tour titles from Simpsonville, South Carolina, Thompson Jones. From Yakima, Washington, the number three seed has four PBA Tour titles, Marshall King. The number two seed comes from Gothenburg, Sweden, and holds seven PBA Tour titles, Jesper Svensson. The number one seed owns nine PBA Tour titles from Huntington, Indiana, E.J. Tackett. Great to have you with us, Bowling fans. Dave Ryan alongside Randy Peterson, my Hall of Fame broadcast partner, our event format RP. Fun to watch again here on CBS Sports Network. Four games of qualifying on four different oil patterns, followed by our stepladder finals. We've already got one in the finals. That's Jason Belmonte. The winner of this stepladder format will join him for the tour finals. EJ Tackett, the defending champ from 2017 in Orlando here in Allen Park, Michigan. Uh, Tommy Jones will get us started. Well, if you like rev rate and power and speed, you're going to love this show. TJ, winning 10 pin at 843 through four games of qualifying. Take the four seed in group two. And remember on our last telecast how we saw, saw Sean Rash get off to that red hot start playing a very similar line that TJ used right there. Kind of straight up between first and second arrow, maybe that 11th or 12th board. Keep everything in front of him until the lanes break down and then chase it way in. Now against the youngster, Marshall Kent. As Dennis said a moment ago, four career PBA Tour titles. Looking for his first major still. Has not won yet in 2018. Could change that here in Allen Park. Only 25 years old from Yakima, Washington. Let's take a look at Marshall strike. Kent. Excuse me, Dave. Take a look at Marshall Kent's form in our super slow mo from profile. Nice push away. Left arm out. There's the bend in the cup. At the bottom of the swing, remember you have two levers for power, elbow and wrist. Marshall Kent uses both of them. Ball 10 back. He finds the one through pocket very well early here as we check out our lane pattern in the semifinal ring. It's the Dick Weber pattern, 45 feet in length. The players are gonna start right around Second arrow right in there, and then as they break down, they'll migrate in and throw to the hook spot that they've created early. Lane paddle chosen by the number one seed in group two, EJ Tackett. Jason Belmonte 
Group one winner also chose the same 45 foot pattern. Second frame for Jones. Same result. Not a whole lot rattles Tommy Jones. Just a couple of ring and tens to start, but again, he's in the right zone. He just has to figure out a way to get this ball to go through the pins the right way. But this is one cool dude. I mean, this guy's cooler than a polar bear's feet. Nothing rattles Tommy Jones. That's cold. Ten pin takes care of the mark. Longtime PBA Tour star. 18 titles, so most of any in our PBA Finals this year. Want to have Jason Belmonte from Simpsonville, South Carolina. He struggled, though, on this lane pattern. Yeah, and unusual. So did Marshall Kent. Marshall only bowled 190 on this oil pattern. All the players agreeing that this would be the highest scoring of the four patterns. All right, and that didn't look a whole lot different than the other two shots that got nine, at least from where I'm sitting. I don't know, Dave, did you see something different? Absolutely not. Okay, thank you. Nice shot. There's one that he talked about on the same Dick Weber, Weber 45 foot oil pattern. In the fourth game of qualifying for an 870. <laughs> Third of four bowlers in group two in qualifying. Great young stars of the game. Marshall Kent has all 10 down. He talks about what will it take to be number one in the world and the best. I still have a few things to learn, uh, actually a lot to learn about the game and um, just mentally maturing, physically maturing. And, you know, I feel like with my work ethic, I'll, I'll get there soon enough and um, it's just gonna take some work and, um, you know, just keep bowling and just learning little things here and there that keep adding up over the years and it'll, it'll get me there eventually. Look out. All right, good break there. Kid's also a gym rat, he's a stud. I mean, I went to the gym with him one day. He was doing chest and biceps. I was doing elbows. Well, he's a lot younger than you are. Yeah, I couldn't keep up, trust me. Keeps himself in great shape and it pays dividends. 4-7 has his mark. Tommy Jones, another great athlete, former baseball player. And uh, when we watch Tommy Jones' form, what stands out is how much he uses his lower half. I mean, he's just got great foundation and great legs, and that's really the key to his power. A great tip for you youngsters at home, especially if you're power players, make sure you keep your legs in great shape. It'll certainly add to the longevity in this sport. TJ. Good looking shot, all 10 back. Break his game down with the Randy. Well, again, he gets the ball into the swing nice and early and gets it to the top quickly with the open hand, left arm out in front, and there again you see the bent elbow and cupped wrist, and then that all straightens out at the bottom. It's like throwing a yo-yo into the floor. That's what creates revolutions. Game breaker two, Phenom Pearl is Tommy Jones's sphere of choice for mm -hmm. game number one. And you talked about his longevity. He mentioned that to us in our interview with Tommy pre-show. He wants to be competitive into his mid-late 40s and he do what? That is so bad, Tommy. Walter Ray Williams Jr., Norm Duke, Pete Weber have done to be competitive that late in their careers. Both players going high on this lane. I don't know if the left lane is starting to break down already or if it's just bad execution. He'll take that four pin. So, Randy, I want your opinion. First on Marshall Kent as he steps up. We heard that interview with him a moment ago about trying to be number one in the world and get to the very top of the sport. Is that something Marshall Kent can do? 
He's got certainly has all the tools to get there. I mean, it, it, you look at the top eight players that are here. It's a power game. Make no mistake about it. You better bring the heat, and you better have a lot of revs. Marshall has all of that. Fifth frame. Leaves a 10 pin. I did an exhibition with Marshall last summer in Japan, and we made Marshall have to throw three strikes in a row. One left-handed, one right-handed, and one two-handed. And guess what? He did it 99% of the time. Is that right? On command. Lefty. <laughs> That's amazing. I mean, two-handed is one thing, but lefty. Yeah, there's a 10 pin. Same ball on the left? No. Code X. High road nano on the right lane, code X on the left lane. Going with a stronger ball on the left. Code X is asymmetric. It is working for Marshall Kent. A nine pin lead on Tommy Jones. Halfway home. Our first step ladder in group two semifinals. Everyone wants to face Jason Belmonte in the 2018 PBA Tour Finals Championship match. Kind of lead on Tommy Jones. Step ladder semifinals group two is underway. Time for a track tech talk with Mr. Kent, Mr. Peterson. Well, we just got done talking about the beauty of Marshall Kent's game. And look at the positions. You can see the, the beautiful cut elbow and wrist at the bottom. And then obviously the physical skills that allows him to create these great positions at the foul line. Look at that balance. You think about how hard he throws it and how much he gets on the ball and is still able to balance himself like that at the foul line. It's a great skill set. Tremendous talent. Facing Tommy Jones here in our first step ladder in the group two semifinal. Works on a spare. Sixth frame for TJ all 10 back. 18th year pro with 18 career PBA Tour titles and two majors to his credit. This is this guy here throughout his career, except those couple of years where he was injured, is one of the best closers the tour has ever known. He's got one of the highest winning percentages in the history of the PBA Tour. Right now, Tommy Jones with a strike in the seventh can take the lead. Entering the PBA Tour Finals, a 49 and 29 career TV record. Over a 221 average onto the bright lights. An incredible player. Great longevity. Great shot. Looked like he gave that one the heater, Ricky. That was pretty fast and pretty firm and pretty direct. And right now, Tommy Jones takes a one pin lead. You see it? Yeah. That was just inside a third arrow. Jones up one with a double. Seventh for Kent to retake the lead. Yes, he will. Beautiful shot by Marshall Kent. Nine pin goes last, and the lead is back in his corner. Nothing is too tough to tackle for former NFL running back Tiki Barber and co-host Brandon Tierney. Get all the sports debate and expertise you need from Tiki and Tierney. Weekday starting at 3 Eastern on CBS Sports Network. Kent up nine. See the max scores. Looks for the turkey in the eighth and has it. And up 19 pins on Tommy Jones. Well, if you like pin action, swipe right because Marshall Kent's got it going. Just increased his lead to 19. Tommy Jones now stepping up in the 10th frame. If he takes it off the sheet, he'll shoot 258. Marshall Kent has 267 possible. See that win percentage Randy was talking about. Ninth all-time PBA Tour history. Almost 63% on TV. Fantastic. You know who's 10th all-time? You. Me. <laughs> Great, man. Top 10's fantastic. It's got to be Dwight in the Hall of Fame. Beautiful shot there by Tyler Jones. Now, this left lane to me is a, little, is a little tricky because it's the lane that both players went high on. It's the lane that the players have chased left. 
They've made some adjustments. The last shot for Tommy Jones on this left lane was extremely high flush. If that ball was a fraction of an inch higher, he could have left a four pin. He's zeroed in on the right lane. I think the right lane's good. It's this lane that I have a question about. So back and forth we go. Jones trying to go back on top. Close match. Right frame. Hopes for the four bagger. Has it. Wow. Crunch all oh, 10 back in the pit in that one three pocket. Great shot. Wow. That ball went through the pins extremely hard. It's funny in talking with Tommy Jones, you know, a few years ago, he was the premier power player or one of them. Him, Robert Smith, guys like that. Well, that was before Belmonte and EJ Tackett and Marshall Kent. And now he's not one of those guys anymore. He has to figure out other ways to beat the high rev players. Response from Kent. And he's back on top by nine pins. I mean, the ball's going through the pin so hard, it almost looks like the nine's following, falling over because it's paralyzed. Ground level, look at that release. Folks, you see where his fingers are when he lets go of the ball? They're behind the ball, not on the side. That's how you create power. See that? Looked like somebody tased the nine pin. <laughs> Four straight. Two strikes, two pins. That's what he needs to shut out Tommy Jones in advance. Crunch time. <laughs> Four pin. There it is. It's called foreshadowing, Dave. This lane to me looked suspect because it looked like it started. It was starting to check early, and sure enough, it got Marshall Kent there. Now he's in danger of losing this game to Tommy Jones. If he strikes on this shot. Tommy Jones will need, need strike, nine spare to win. Both players bowling great games here. I tell you, anytime you lose with 240 on television, it's tough. That's an elbow on the ninth pin. And a 246 posted by Marshall Kent. Up steps Tommy Jones with a chance to wrap it up. He has to strike on this ball. Strike nine spare required to dispatch Marshall Kent. And then take on Jesper Svensson. Climbing the ladder. EJ Tackett is the top seed to beat AJ. It's going to take two games. He's tied at one, then they'll have a two frame extra bowling session, ninth and tenth. Gotta be a strike. Tommy Jones steps up. So good. Ten pin. God, that was so good. Well, he ended this game like he started this game. Remember the two massive ring and tens to start in frames one and two. Tommy Jones aces this shot. And watch the six just sling around the ten. Unfortunate break. He bowled a great game. Marshall Kent is going to move on to face Jesper Svensson. Ringing 10 pin, tough break for TJ with a great shot. And Tommy Jones' quest for a 19th career PBA Tour title will end here today in Allen Park. Another 10 pin, we've seen that before. 246, 236, Marshall Kent advances to take on Jesper Spenson. In match number two, they're all Jason EJ attacking the top seed. In group two, Jason Belmonte won group one. PBA Tour Finals rolls on next from Allen Park, Michigan. Except second match from Allen Park, Michigan. Marshall Kent, Jesper Spenson about to go head to head. Special guest in the booth with us is the world's number one ranked player, Jason Belmonte. Belmo is the top seed for group one. He bowled so well earlier this summer on CBS Sports Network. When you're watching Today's show, what are some of your impressions of the early bowling? Well, you know, I think the first thing that we're seeing is some pretty good bowling out there. I mean, the guys have got a pretty good look to the pocket. Um, you know, Tommy threw, I think, a couple of shots that he wished he could take take back. But overall, 
you know, 230, 240s uh, is a pretty good start to the TV show today. It's going to be interesting to see how Jesper plays though. I was just going to ask you, do you think this is a buy for Marshall Kent? Because Jesper emphatically said he did not care for this oil pattern. Well, you know, Jesper's one of those kind of guys that, uh, you know, he may, he may be just uh, taunting Marshall a little bit with the idea of he doesn't really like it. The thing with Jesper is uh, in one game, if he gets just a little look yeah. with that urethane ball, he makes it work. So, you know, watching him throw a few practice shots out there, he's gone high flush a couple of times. So I would imagine that Marshall is not thinking this is going to be an easy game. And the thing about it is him being the only southpaw, if he does find something, he may be unbeatable. Well, that's usually what happens with that side of the lane is if they have a little something, it's generally untouched uh, by anyone else. And um, they can really, you know, throw some strings of strikes that make it really difficult for the, uh, the right-handers to keep up. Thelma's going to hang with us, offer some guest analysis. In our first show in the semifinals, EJ Tackett. Top seed in this group, too, joined us. Kent starts match two with a strike. Hey Jason, I, gotta, I have to ask you this. It, what I've noticed in game one, it looked like the left lane started to go first, like there was more friction on that lane. Is that what you saw in your match? It was actually the opposite for us. Um, I had the right lane hook in um, probably about five or six boards more than the wow. left lane. Uh, and I actually saw the transition happening on the right lane first in our match. Crunch all 10 back for Jesper Svensson. Okay, for someone who doesn't like this oil pattern, that looked all right. That, that looked pretty good, didn't it? it? That had nice shape to it. Yeah, and that's the thing when with the Jesper and the urethane bowling ball is, you know, there isn't too much uh, crazy angularity. So if he finds that consistent line uh, to the pocket, he can repeat uh, incredibly well. And that uh, type of bowling ball in his hand, with his ability to repeat, as long as he can feel confident it's going to go through the pins. He's one of the hardest players in the world to beat. That's the hit he has to carry. And that, in, and that is the only thing that I think um, is going to slow him down, is that if he leaves that flat seven a couple of times, it may get into his mind that he's going to have to do something a little different, and that could cause the ball to you know, it, miss it, it will cause him to miss it um, inside of target, uh, trying to go more high flush to cause the error. He has to stay patient, um, and he has to make a really, really subtle change if he's consistently leaving that seven pin. Hopefully by then, he has enough time if Marshall hasn't, uh, you know, continued to strike. Picks up the seven pin. Second frame here for Marshall Kent. Well, the young guns that we talked about in your group one when Belmo just about some of these young guys trying to chase you and it motivates you, keeps you going. Yeah, absolutely. I want them to get better because they, they push me to be better. Um, I'm never going to be complacent when I watch guys like Marshall Ken throw the ball just like that. I mean, that that's scary to watch from up here and when you're on the lanes with him, um, it's even scarier. How talented do you think this guy is, Jason? Yeah, one of the things that I think Marshall doesn't get recognized enough for is he's worked really hard on playing straighter. He's curving the ball a little bit today, but he's gotten really good at throwing it straight. Now, when you've got somebody who throws the ball with 550 RPMs curving it and can also throw it straight, um, you know, that becomes a player, you know, who's very versatile. And you've got to watch out for him on, on multiple patterns now. <coughs> 310 baby split here for Marshall Kent. What a future he's got in front of him. I will say the only thing that is holding Marshall back right now is um, the thing between his ears. You know, I, I watch him bowl on television and then I compare that to what I see through qualifying or through the match play rounds, and he does look a little different. He looks a little bit more. Um, I don't want to say the word serious because he's always a serious competitor, but it almost look, he looks like he's overthinking when he's on television. And he's the kind of player that should just get his hand in the ball, 
standing where he wants to stand and then just let it go instead of trying to maybe overthink it. That's a great point because he told Dave and I both that on television he needs to make better decisions. Saw to 27 on the same 45 foot oil pattern. So I, I, I'm thinking that based on your comment, Jason, and what I've seen, that there's times where he overthinks it. Lucky me. Yeah, I just think he, he's trying to be too perfect, okay. you know, and it's one game against your, uh, your competitor in this format, and in one game, when you try to be perfect, then you start to, um, I guess, focus on everything that is going wrong instead of focusing on the things that you're doing right. That was a great reaction, by the way, from Jesper after that last hit. It was kind of a nine and a half. He didn't really get a strike. He left one standing in the, <laughs> in the gutter. A little Deadwood there. That was interesting. You don't see that very often. Svensson with some power. So Belmont being a right-handed two-hander and watching Jesper do it from the left side. How do you view that difference in his game? Yeah, I think we're completely different players. Um, we might use a similar technique but the way that he attacks the lane and compared to the way that I like to see the lane um, is very different. You know, Jesper prefers that urethane bowling ball. He prefers to throw faster and harder, uh, where I like to see a little bit more shape. But again, Jesper, when you're that good at repeating something and it's your A game, you have the ability to, to put fear in any of the player's eyes out here. And he's, you know, 600 RPM playing his A game, no one likes to see that. Marshall Kent, lane level guys, impressive. 14 pins separate the two now. Heading into the fifth frame. Joined by Jason Belmonte, the world's number one player. Multi PBA player of the year award winner. Looking for an 18th title, he won group one. So he'll be in the PBA Tour Finals Championship show coming up on CBS Sports Network next week. Try to cut it out, Lee does. And Marshall using two different bowling balls on this pair. And finally catches another double after the open. Or I shouldn't say finally, catches a double immediately after the open. Now it's up to Jesper to, to extend his lead. Jason, I have a question for you as we take a look at his arsenal, which doesn't change a whole lot. Uh, it's, it's urethane, urethane, and more urethane as he's going with the natural. We, we've asked him this question. I've spoken with him before many a times. What is it about using reactive resin that doesn't work for Jesper? Look, I don't want to talk for him, um, but the thing that I see when he uses reactive, um, the way that he lets go of the urethane bowling ball, it's a very aggressive release. He really hits hard on the ball, which is what you have to do when you're throwing release can be a little unpredictable down the lane. And speaking of someone who creates a lot of rotation myself, when the lanes get a little tricky and you're using a, a reactive bowling ball and you're creating a lot of angle down lane, you can leave a lot of nasty things. That's why I think he typically likes the urethane bowling ball. It's a very controlled shape. It lets him feel the ball as hard, hit the ball as hard as he wants and not see that crazy shape down the end of the lane. Out of a strike and a 24 pin lead. For Jesper Svensson of Sweden against Marshall Kent from Yakima, Washington. It's match two, trying to climb the ladder. And eventually the winner will take on EJ Tag in the top seed of group two. Conclusion of match number two comes your way next. From the biggest name. You bought it? Well, bought is a loose term. I might have stolen <laughs> it from the merchandise booth when, when no one was watching. Oh, lordy, lordy. Six frame here, Marshall Kent, guys. Last day close with Jesper Svensson. Got a 24 pin lead. Well, this is what got Tommy Jones the last game. This hit right here. Notice where the fingers are at release. Up the back of the ball, not on the side, folks. And there's it six viciously around the 10. There's the 10. He's run by the world number one, Jason that, Belmonte. That would have made the 7 10. <laughs> so, Jason. We'll take a look at this first here. I've got a question for you. Hits wow. the sweep, comes off the sweep. That had a that had a really good chance of taking the seven out if it was there.
seventh frame for Kemp. Works on a spare. That's a strike. Guess he went to South Florida and met with some victims of the Parkland shootings. Got to know one of the families really well. Tell us that story. Yeah, what what a, an amazing experience for me to meet some of the most uh, incredible human beings that I've had a chance to meet. Um, shout out to the Carboshi family, um, and in particular Hannah. Hannah was a student who uh, was in her classroom when um, it all went down. She lost two of her friends, um, saw four more injured in uh, in her classroom, and. The family together have raised uh, near 30000 actually over $30,000 for the families affected by the tragedy. And when I heard their story, I just had to go meet them. And, and she may be one of the most beautiful human beings that I, I've ever had a chance to meet. So nice you to spend time with yeah, that family. And absolutely. We know the bowling world has been so supportive of that family and some of the victims in South Florida. Well, let me tell you, I, I want to make this point if I can. One of the things I'm most proud about uh, being a bowler is that we bowlers are a community of people that when uh, one of us needs the rest of us, we step up. I can't tell you how many millions of dollars are raised through bowling center events throughout the year globally. Um, and it, it really makes my heart burst with love when, when I think about you know, how amazing our little family of bowlers really is. Amazing bowling here for Svensson, no question. And, you know, let me just add to this, to, to what Jason said. Jason is one of the best, if not the best, at giving his time. He's a super, he's the number one player on tour. He's the greatest bowler on the planet, but he's probably number one at giving his time and taking time out to do things for fans and do things like he just did down in South Florida. So, Jason, hats off to you as well. Yeah, we appreciate that so much, Jason, being such a great ambassador to the sport. Right now, Marshall Kent's in trouble. Yeah, with, with a couple of frames to go, Randy, Marshall has a really only one option. That's to continue to strike. And he's got to hope that that urethane ball is just going to leave a few pins coming down the stretch. If uh, Jesper does not strike in the ninth, uh, and if Marshall strikes right now, um, the heart rate will go up in both players because both of them will feel like either one can win. <clears throat> How come when my ball hits there, I leave a solid nine, and his rev rate is twice mine? Well, he's throwing pins around a lot more than you are. It's not gotcha. like he's hitting something that's not gotcha. the, the nine pin. You need to increase your rev rate okay. to knock out the nine pin. All right, I got you. So right now, yes, for Svensson, his max score is 280. He's in the 240s right now. Max score for Marshall Kent, 245. So with a hit here, Jesper would just need good count on his first ball in the 10th. But obviously, Jason, he has found a, a little bit different way to get to the pocket on his quote-unquote tougher pattern. Yeah, and the only thing that's going to slow Jesper down is is the 6-8 uh, the split. That will be the one split that I see him leaving, if he leaves anything at all, which this particular case, he rips the five pin into the 10th. Seven straight strikes at eight of nine in the match here for Jesper Svensson on fire, guys. Now, the reason why I say the 6-8 split is the one that I see him leaving is because of this length of oil pattern, the 45 feet length, he's not going to want to throw the ball to the outside part of the lane. He knows it's not going to hook back. So his miss is going to be inside of target where the ball is going to hold its line. But if he misses just a fraction more than... Uh, he would want that ball is going to slide all the way through the oil go high flush leaving the 6-8 split Ooh. Wow, he seriously nearly left that was that was as close to leaving the 6-8 as you can leave If he can just get that ball shaping the way that it is today This is what he does. He, he misses once and shoots 270 or 280 and then Goes to the next pair, he bowls on and does it again. And remember, the, the, the only shot he missed was a flat seven, which kind of left a question mark in my mind as to whether or not he'd be able to strike enough. Well, he answered that question. Look, my if I was to ask Jesper a question now, if I had the opportunity, is if this line does not hold for another two more games in which he has to bowl two more against EJ, what is the move? 
where do you go from here? I don't think he can move like in. Does he change bowling ball? Does he throw it harder? Does he hit it harder? I would love to know the answer to that because that final shot was a seven pin. Yeah. I see more of those coming. And that's 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 a great idea. I'll ask him that when I go down to interview him for the, the uh, final match. No worries. I'm glad I can help you Thank do your you, job. Thank you, Jason. How much do I owe you for that? <laughs> yeah. Some assistance from Jason. I'm <laughs> just the number one ranked player in the world. Also, apparently a... <laughs> also, apparently a uh, great broadcast analyst. coach for Randy. 279. There's a sense that he had eight straight strikes. That streak ended, but a tremendous game for Jesper to advance as he's... Going to get through to the two-game Group 2 final against EJ Tackett. So, Belmo, you have, if you have the higher average, we'll see what happens with EJ Tackett. Choice of lane pattern. Can you tell us now what you're thinking about for the championship show? Back to Weber? You know, I, I had a really good look um, on that pattern. It, it really depends, honestly. It depends on, um, on how I'm feeling. Here we go, Marshall's doing oh, a little, little trick. <laughs> Let's Football. have some fun. Football. Come on, ball. Almost did it. <laughs> Need some more friction. Why not? 279, 233. That's the final. Jesper Svensson will take on EJ Tackett for the Group 2 title. And the winner will battle Jason Belmonte. What do you think, Belmo? Pretty cool trick, huh? Kind of looked like Jesper's ball when Jesper was two years old. <laughs> I kind of like when you throw the backup ball. That's pretty cheesy. I like that. Jason Belmonte, thanks for joining us in the booth. Great job. Thanks, Boys, Jay. No worries at all. It's a pleasure. Look forward to watching you compete PBA Tour Finals Championship Show against either Jesper Svensson or EJ Tackett. That's the next two-game match coming your way on CBS Sports Network. Svensson, impressive against Kent. He'll take on Tackett next. Thank you, Dave. Yes, bro, I'm going to start with you. We talked about this 45-foot oil pattern. You didn't seem to care for it, but you obviously found something. What changed? Yeah, well, I, I realized yesterday night that probably um, uh, the, the 220 is not going to be enough in a high-scoring pattern. So I was thinking about it over the night and, um, yeah, came up with a good solution. Is your ball reaction going to be there for two more games? We're about to find out. Thanks. Good luck. EJ, a couple of games away from a rematch of last year with Jason Belmonte. How do you get it done against Jesper? Uh, well, obviously that first match, uh, Jesper's pretty locked in right now, so 220 is not going to win. Uh, I, I'm, I'm assuming that uh, both games are going to be over 250 for the winning score. So got that in mind. I'm just going to have to go out there and strike a bunch. Is it out there on the right side for you? Um, I think so. I just I got to make good shots, and uh, hopefully the pins fall if I can make those good shots. Thanks, CJ. Good luck. Thank you. Red EJ, thank you. And thanks to Jesper for his time as well. We match main level interview to the best young bowlers in the world. Jesper Svensson from Sweden and EJ Tackett. Huntington, Indiana, not far from Indianapolis, will get us started. Got to win two games. If it's tied one each, then we'll have a two-frame extra bowling session. Ninth and tenth. Tack it. Gets us sturdy. Everything but knock down the 10. Wow. That was a nasty little messenger in front of the 10, huh, Dave? Not sure how it missed. There's 10 pin. Rizzi is that top seed. You're watching the other matches in the step ladder. That was a one game match. Of course, Spencer was able to win over Marshall Kent. Third last year in Orlando for Jesper. Now it's two games. Game one underway. High scoring pattern so far. Seven pin with power. Well, the last time we saw that hit, he shot 279. And again, I, I, not to beat a dead horse, but this is exactly what Belmonte was talking about. Will Jesper's shot hold up for two more games? Will he be able to get the seven out? I think he's going to be able to hit the pocket. <laughs> All time on TV. How about Jesper Svensson? Number two all-time PBA Tour history. 
at 230.13 onto the bright lights. Yeah, and keep in mind, he's 23 years old. Uh, the two bottom guys, uh, 55 and, and 59. That's impressive. In some elite company. Svensson. That ball picked up a little bit sooner, and he trips the 6'10 out for a strike. Now EJ Tackett, a couple years ago, he was the player of the year. Calm, even cue. Yeah, you can take a look at EJ Tackett from super slow-mo, and this is what I call efficiency of motion. He didn't weigh but maybe 130 pounds, and he uses all of that and look at that move at the bottom and I love the open hand release. Remember it wasn't long ago that he was using 16 pounds. He just recently went to 15 uh, a, a few months ago. So imagine this kid here throwing that 16 pounder at about 18 miles an hour with a rev rate over 500. Oh, and have we mentioned he can hit a golf ball 300 yards and, he, <laughs> and he's a plus two handicap? Plus two handicap. Just thought I'd throw that in there. You yeah, Ronnie Russell among the best. The PBA Tour on the golf course. That's impressive. Impressive ball in two for EJ Tackett. Just an amazing hand at the bottom of the swing. Yes, for Spencer, by the EJ's gotten so good at being versatile as well and going straight oh, when he has to, using your thing when he has to, hooking the entire lane when he can. But this guy here, yes for Svensson, sure doesn't give you a whole lot emotionally. You really don't know what he's thinking. And I think that, that that's part of the allure of him. That's part of what, what makes us really enjoy watching him. Does that create an advantage when your opponent is not showing much emotionally? I, I don't know. You know, Earl Anthony never showed a lot. And... Uh, I remember when I, I first bowled, the first time I bowled Earl Anthony in match play, and somebody told me as we take another look at Jesper going through the nose here, somebody told me, hey, listen, whatever you do, don't be running it out and slapping it off in, Earl, in Earl's face, because th that's just going to make him angry. So I remember bowling Earl that, that first time I ever bowled him, and I kept my mouth shut. I just threw the ball down the lane, had no reaction whatsoever, and I still got smoked. <laughs> Budge, you were respectful. That's good. That's for Svensson and Tackett here in game one. Group two finals. Group one won by Jason Belmonte. So he's got a shot. PBA Tour Finals Championship show. Winner of this match will take on Belmo for the title. Remember, this is best of two, not total pins. Svensson. 4-7 this time. And this is kind of what we were talking about. You know, it was there for a game and what, however amount of practice he had. And now all of a sudden, that ball's starting to check early. And he knows he can't give the pocket away to the left because the pattern's too long. So he's going to keep moving and try to find another line to the pocket. And hopefully stay in. Whoa. Whoa. My bad. Okay. Let's try this again. Never seen him do this. Seven. There's his mark. Spares might not do it against this guy. Well, there's one thing we know about EJ Tackett. When he gets it going and he has a little bit of carry, he never stops striking. 458 on this pattern. Fourth game of qualifying. <laughs> 
That is just pure filth. All 10 back in the pit. Last PBA player other than Jason Belmonte to capture the Player of the Year award is E.J. Tackett, 2013 Rookie of the Year. His victories in the 2016 PBA World Championships where he defeated Tom Smallwood for his first major title. Followed it up with another major victory at the 2017 Tournament of Champions, knocking off Tommy Jones. And you and I called it last year, celebrating with that, Ed. The inaugural PBA Tour Finals in Orlando. So impressive as well. E.J. Tackett. What a career ahead of this young man. Yeah, it's uh, pretty impressive that at age 25, he's already eligible for the Hall of Fame with nine victories and two majors. And he told us this week the realization that things are going really well for him and that he has a great future and has done so much in his bowling career is when he heard that news. Hall of Fame eligible? Really? <laughs> I mean, yeah. it just. I got. I got to tell you, back. Him like a ton of bricks. Back in my era, in, in in my heyday, we we never thought about the Hall of Fame at age 25, ever. Smithson, 10 pin. Seen that one before. <clears throat> Yeah, I can tell you, there's a lot going through his mind right now. Not so much in that first game that he bowled against Marshall Kent, but a great shot and a bad break, leaving that jam 10 pin. But Jesper Svensson is uh, one, of, one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet out on this tour. I know we talk a lot about, as he covers the 10, we talk a lot about his power and you know, he's, he's got that, that look, you know, that, that good-looking Swedish kid with the tats, and he's got a lot of, but he is one of the nicest people you'll ever meet. Very soft-spoken. Big hockey fan, played soccer and hockey. Of course, the addition of bowling growing up, the bowling center literally was located next to his school, so he would <laughs> leave class and be on the lanes in two minutes flat. And he said that was so instrumental in his development, just having access to the lanes as a youngster to continue to work on his craft. Always been a two-hander. We'll try it one-handed once in a while. It doesn't go too well. A strike in the six for Svensson. E.J. Tackett with a turkey in frames three, four, and five. Has a lead on Svensson in game one. Got to win two, though, to win group two. Tackett, Svensson head-to-head, E.J. Tackett a 22-pin lead. Go for a four-bagger in the sixth frame. Randy, our Columbia 300 fun fact is? The messenger, or scout, refers to a pin that comes across the pin deck, take out a standing pin. Do you see the speed of that, that messenger? That, that kind of reminds me of my messengers. Yeah, Do you prefer using messenger or scout in the broadcast? I, I like messenger. I haven't heard a lot of scouts for you this week. Scout, yeah, I, I think messenger's kind of my thing. <laughs> Now these guys here, like Jesper and EJ, Belmonte, Marshall Kent, they, they throw really fast messengers. Strike streak, public for four straight, and has it, EJ Tackett. Well, they're big one to go up 32 pins. Yep, he said, well, you know what, I'm not gonna wait for Jesper Spenson to get lined up. I'm just gonna take control of game number one, and EJ Tackett out to a 32 pin lead. DJ grew up around bowling as well. His family has owned a bowling center his entire life. Dad, Ed, and the family actually building a new one as you see his arsenal. Moving a little further away from where they were in Huntington. Wow. And it'll be named Easy Bowl, as in EJ and Brother Zach. There's a really good story about EJ's family where uh, everybody, every member of EJ's family has won the Fort Wayne City Masters, except EJ. Imagine that. One of the best players on the planet has not won the Fort Wayne City Masters yet. Everyone in his family has done it. That is something else. I mean, he told us that story. I thought it was great. And he actually, I think he likes to tell it because it's a big family matter of pride there. And I think he's motivated even more to, you just know his family lets him know about it. Dad's been his coach his whole life. Seventh frame. That's a really good sign. 
for Jesper Svensson, and I'll tell you why. It looked like he got it a little bit left. The ball actually came back to the pocket, and then the four sent the seven pin into concussion protocol. Watch the action of the four pin and just whiplash as a seven. That's a really good sign. Bang. Got to win two games. There's a long way to go here. It is 32 pin lead for Tackett. That's just in game one. You guys strung together five straight strikes. Turkey chance here, eighth frame. You can see the great TV numbers for Svensson. Yeah. In going comes, yeah. I think that was in Swedish, so I can't even uh, <laughs> begin oh. to translate what he just said after that shot. But. It just looked like it picked up in the middle part of the lane a little bit quicker than he wanted it. And again, he'll make another adjustment on that lane if he gets it to the spot and it, it does what it did on the right lane. It could be game on in game two, but right now, game one looks like it's going to EJ Tackett. Six pin, there it is. He told us komien in Swedish means good. And bra, I hope I had that pretty close to right, was bra. Bra. Yeah. Success, strike, good things. And neither of those were used on that last. No. His last week, yeah. so I'm we're not going to be able to translate that. It was definitely in the negative. <laughs> Take. Oh, oh, it's a 7 10. And just the 10 stands here for EJ trying to put this game away and a little scare there for the defending champ. Well, this is almost a pocket 7 10 with a ring 10 on the side. Andy Bartizal close to shave replay. And there's the 10th Yeah, minus the shaving cream because uh, the, <laughs> the very close to being. A 7-10, but I got to be honest with you. I, I've watched DJ Tack at Bull a lot, and and I, I mean, maybe I'm crazy, but I feel that I've watched him bowl some really, really good games where his carry stunk, and uh, reminiscent of that last shot we just saw. Thank you. I mean, am I? I am on point right now. You have been pretty much the entire. Wow. You know, some, sometimes I surprise myself. <laughs> Never surprises me, partner. And I'm not saying that this shot should strike, but it had a pretty good chance. Remember, a couple of shows back, he's leaving solid nines and all this and the other. And then last week, he carries those, uh, he trips those nine pins out and gets the messengers to come across. You know, and then and then ends up as your uh, number one seed for group two. But look at EJ's game: ten pin, ten pin, five bagger, ten pin, ten pin. Weeknight starting at six Eastern. Adam Shine brings his unmatched enthusiasm to a whole new level on his nightly show, full of strong opinions and high energy. Time to shine right here on CBS Sports Network. Frames Fencing on a spear. All 10 back. Trying to figure something out for game two. You know, Dave, you and I should have our own show. Could be Rhino like Randy, the, Randy Rhino. Probably you first. You're the Randy one. and Rhino. I think we could have like a variety show. It would be great to have, you know, talk sports. Radio. I'm like, ready. And, and, you know, and, but have, have like more bowling than anything else. That's, I think we should do that. I'm ready to go. Have guests on. Both EJ and Velma were fantastic. That's so cool. In show Jason. analysts for us on CBS Sports Network. Here at the PBA Tour Finals. Yeah, lost on that lane. He's going to make a spare here. Hopefully, gives him uh. one more shot that he can throw in the tenth to figure out the left lane. I mean, you would think that the logical move would be to move right with his feet and maybe try to open up the pattern just a little bit, but 
you know, on this long pattern, the Esper's looking for hold and not swing. So he'll have some thinking to do no. heading into the second game. Unless you're Joe, unless you're Joe C. Unless you're Joe C. Then you would. That looked like he chased it in a little bit more, Dave. You know, getting back to the the variety show that yes. we were talking, we should do it late night so I could curse. It would be entertaining. Yes, it would. It would be a lot of fun. 206 for Spencer. EJ Tackett. Four pin late change? here. Anybody? Trying to set himself up for game two. Wrap it up and take on Belmonte. PBA Tour Finals Championship show as the group two winner. And EJ actually looked like he, he threw a different ball in that shot. It looked like it had a little more surface to it. Hard to see from our vantage point way up here, but. Jesper talking to Hall of Famer Del Ballard Jr. Tour rep. Well, that's two different balls there in the 10th frame for EJ Tackett. It's gonna be interesting to see what he does. 235, 206. Game one score, EJ Tackett from Huntington, Indiana, wants to close out Spencer in game two, win group two to take on Belmonte for the PBA Tour Finals Championship. Crowd's ready, so is EJ Tackett. Simonson will be bowling for that, that third place match. Question is, is it going to be against Jesper Svensson or EJ Tackett? Yeah, you know, that, that, that's the trouble spot. And, you know, he gave that one a little bit more room to the left. And this ball hangs. And again, that's the problem with urethane. Now, the only way he gets that to the pocket is if he throws it slower. He wanted a better start to game two. And Covers nicely. And a good pickup and spare for Jesper Svensson. Time for the hammer, tough spare. Replay, Randy. Yeah. Normally this is a 2-4-5, but he's left-handed. So that's the 3-5-6. And he covers it perfectly. Splits the 5 and the 6 and a half. And now it's E.J. Tackett. Who's looking to put an end to Jesper Svensson's day. Jesper finished third last year. And EJ Tackett strikes once again. And look at that great release. And that's just a 10 pin party in the pit. Starts game two, we left off game one. On fire. Former player of the year. Wants to repeat the feat, win this championship. And he is locked in. Hey, you, you brought up a great comment earlier when you said, you know, he's never defended a title successfully. He's in great shape to do that, or at least get to the finale against Jason Belmonte. <coughs> Already Spencer in a hole. Game two. Second frame and six ten stand. Well, it would have been nice to see a match where Jesper Svensson had a good ball reaction to get to the pocket because I think it would have been lights out and fireworks everywhere, but he's struggling on both lanes now, and I'm not sure what he should do. If he moves in, now he's moving into the dry part of the heads where the right-handers are playing. I don't know how it affects his ball getting through the front part of the lane. I know that if he gets it too far to the left, it doesn't get back. And if he gets it up the lane, he's too far to the right now to, for the ball to lay there and hit the one, two in the face. Maybe you go grab a uh, reactive ball and just say, 
To heck with it. Let's go. Join us for our next PBA telecast, Tuesday, June 19th. In Eastern, we crown the champion of the PBA Tour Finals from here in Thunderbolt Lanes, Allen Park, Michigan. Jason Belmonte is the Group 1 winner, Group 2. The title is being contested here today. DJ Tackett, first two strikes game two. He won the first game convincingly. Got to win two games in the Group Finals. See, to me, that looked like it was a little softer, and he nails the pocket and then gets nine. So, as a player, you're like, okay, well, what do I do now? And thanks for nothing. So many adjustments that you can or can make, and they can make a break. It's amazing. In this sport, seven pin takes care of business. You know, and he knows it. I mean, he, he's handcuffed. E.J. Tackett knows it. Wow, all oh, 10 back. E.J. Tackett. Talks to us about some earlier struggles in his career. Two years ago, nobody forgot that, that I couldn't win on TV. Um, it was one of those things where I just had to learn what my body was doing. And, and obviously, throughout the year, you don't get a lot of opportunity to try to figure it out. And uh, for me, it was just a, a longer learning curve than uh, maybe other people had. Other people come out on TV, maybe they bowl in college um, under the lights and stuff like that. So they already had a little bit more experience than I personally had. Everything is a process out here. You learn how to cash, you learn how to make match play, you learn how to get to television, and then you learn how to win on television. That's hard to imagine. Just a couple of years back, he was struggling because he has not done that recently for sure. Nine titles and two majors for E.J. Tackett. That's for Svensson. Steps back up, all of a sudden he is down at 33 pins in a big hole early. Game two, seven pin. Well, now I'm getting mad. Back to back ring sevens on the right lane. A really good shot for Jesper, but again, limited when the urethane doesn't work. Asked, I asked him, what kind of arsenal did you bring here to the uh, PBA Tour Finals? He said, nine urethane balls. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Seven pin. Virtual channel and picks it up. That was close. <laughs> he knows it. I think he thought that was going in. Yeah. And, it, and it stayed up. Hmm? Yeah, real quick. Machine thought I missed it. So did I, to be honest. Yeah, unfortunately, through four frames in game two, the riding's on the wall. I mean, how else do you spin this? Jesper is struggling to hit the pocket. When he does hit the pocket, he gets nine. And EJ Tackett is just striking every ball. Fifth frame. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Repeat script yeah. over and over again on these ringing seven pins. <laughs> yep. You know, the, the scary part is what happens when he finally figures out how to use reactive resin? Then what? This lights out. I'm, well, I mean, it could possibly be. I, you know, he's so good with your thing, but when he doesn't he have that look, if he had something else to go to, like reactive, uh. and got good at that. Back to EJ. A splits for 10. Game change. Well, this would have been kind of significant if 
Jesper Svensson carried the last two ring and sevens. I would say, well, hang on a minute, folks. We might have something here. An open frame cuts into his lead. And not a bit of anxiety for EJ Tackett after that shot. EJ one and one off. All 10 back. Nice recovery from the open frame for EJ Tackett. Our lead on Jesper Svensson in game two. He won the first game. Got to win two to win group two to take on Jason Belmonte. 2018 PBA Tour Finals Championship Show from suburban Detroit, Michigan. Chris Fence and Randy, some really tough breaks. A series of ringing seven shots. It looked like there are strikes when he got them out of the hands. Well, yeah, I mean, he, he's thrown a, a couple of these and they all start to look the same. And right now, Jesper Svensson is starting to feel like he's slowly being poisoned. Wow. I mean, carbon copies. Amazing. He's got to win this match. Stay in it. Well, that time it looked like he moved left and tried to firm it up. I'll tell you what, no one likes to live on this island. No matter what you do, you can't knock 10 down even when you do hit the pocket. Six pin takes care of it. But at this point of the match, he needs a strike three. Just can't find that look in the pocket. Now what, Dell? Stat pack breaks it down for you. That's all you need to know. <laughs> One open for Tackett. That came in his fifth frame. Body responded with a strike. As EJ tends to do. Yeah. Well, even though he's from Sweden, he's actually doing some German bowling right now. Nine, 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 nine. <laughs> I'm sorry, I got nothing. I got nothing. What though. you need is sane, sane, sane. I know you speak German. That's, that's why I use German. the German reference. I, I appreciate that. I mean, it's good. I, like, wanted, I wanted to let it. You're almost fluent in German. Go out there. That's why I brought it out. <laughs> Best and done. And once again, Jesper sits down on the bench trying to figure out how to get all 10 down. This man knows how, though, EJ Tackett. I mean, you really got a feel for Jesper, man. He's, he's working his butt off, trying to, everything he knows to do to, to strike, and it's just not happening. This guy can strike. And we're getting closer and closer to a rematch of last year with the number one and number two players on the planet. They're going to have another go. DJ two and two all time. Head to head with Belmo on TV at 205.50 average. And last year, three game total pinfall title match of this event in Orlando. EJ won it 666 to 628. Different format this year. He's got to be confident. Hmm. Well, nine spares, fine. TJ Tackett at 225 with the conversion here. Yes, for Svensson going at 193. Best finish for EJ this year at third. At the Roth Holman PBA Doubles Championship in Columbus, Ohio. We'd love to get back in the winner's circle this year here in Allen Park, Michigan. Eight 
Good frame here for Svensson. Works on a spare. In big trouble. And a big cheer for the crowd here at Allen Park. Finally all 10 back. And he realizes he needed that a lot earlier. Yeah, that was definitely farther left and a lot more speed. And got to feel that the law of averages finally caught up with him. Eight frames into it, he probably catches his first hit. And there's the lighthearted Jesper Svensson acknowledging that same fact. It's nice that he can make light of it a little bit, right? I mean, at this point. He's just that kind of guy. I mean, and, and that's the right thing to do, obviously. I mean, it, it's not over, folks. Mathematically, Jesper Svensson can strike out and shoot 223. And now Jesper would need a small miracle. DJ Tackett closing in on winning group two and facing Jason Belmonte. The PBA Tour Finals Championship show Belmonte next week on CBS Aaron. Sports Network. Third place finish as well be determined. DJ Tackett continues to mow them over. Uh, another strike for EJ in the ninth. Seven strikes in the match. So impressed, Randy, with how he rebounded from the open in the fifth as well. No problem for EJ. No, and, and I'll tell you why. Because he knew his opponent couldn't strike. There was no pressure on him. All he has to do is just stay out of his own way. He's done that more. And wrapped up group two with a two-game win over Jesper Svensson. Solid effort for EJ Tackett in two games. Huh? Setting up a rematch of the 2017 PBA Tour Finals. We had in Orlando last year won by this guy EJ Tackett over Jason Belmonte. I mean, EJ Tackett, he rips on it so hard. When his ball goes down the lane, it sounds like it's eating the lane finish off of the lane surface. Like it's digging in. See if you can hear it on this next shot, Dave. See what I'm talking about? Huh? I got gotcha. you. DJ Tackett, 245. How about that? And a huge lead on Jesper Svensson. A victory in two straight games. And Jason Belmonte does have the higher average of all games bowled in this event. For qualifying, and then the one in the three point championship. He'll pick the lane pattern with a higher average for the championship show. And we asked him on a broadcast, he thought probably the 45 foot Weber pattern, which has yielded some big numbers, but you just never know. Well, Jason Belmonte, we'll find out next week. Jesper will take on Anthony Simonson in the third place match next week on CBS Sports Network. So more of yes for the cup. Uh, well, this won't be the last time either now or next week that you see this man. <laughs> Bright future for Jesper Svensson. Crazy game, isn't it? Can't strike it till the eight strikes out of the ten. And EJ Tackett wins 245 203 and wins both games of the group two final. So the stepladder event leading us to that best of two final match is complete. EJ Tackett wins group two. He'll face the group one winner, Jason Belmonte, next week. EJ, congratulations, you're moving on. Uh, talk about how the lack of ball reaction for Jesper Svensson affected the way you attack this championship pair. 
You know, that, that first game, he was rolling along pretty well, and then at the end, he, he struggled a little bit. And uh, when I got up in the 10th frame, I knew I had the match one, so I fished a little bit, tried a couple other balls. I ended up staying with, with the same one, which is the ball that actually got me here to this position, or to that position on the show um, when we bowled on this pattern before. So the next game, he, he started out through a couple bad shots at the beginning, but it was just ring seven, ring seven, ring seven, ring seven. And up until, you know, the sixth frame, Obviously, he can still strike out and bowl 240. So after that, I thought I had a pretty good chance. When I when I 410, I was like, oh, come on. Like, what are you doing, man? You know, you got this match in your hands. But uh, I was able to make some good shots coming down the stretch there and uh, just go ahead and lock the match up. All right, and so we're going to have a rematch of last year. We talked about how you've never successfully defended a title. You've got another chance of doing that. You're going to go up against Jason Belmonte. Uh, your thoughts moving forward to that matchup? Well, obviously, Bell and I have been uh, two of the hottest players on tour the last couple of years, so it's going to be an exciting match. There's, I assume there's going to be a lot of strikes thrown. Uh, he proved that earlier when, when he bowled, and uh, I expect him to do the same thing again, so I'm going to have to bring my strike and choose and uh, make some really good shots. We just found out he's going to pick the same pattern, the Weber pattern. With his rev rate, your rev rate, how do you anticipate that pattern holding up when you two go at it? You know, I don't know. It, it depends on uh, the way he's going to play the lanes. If, if he breaks them down to the right, I could see a progression like I just had. But he may, he may go way left, which, you know, if he goes le way left, I may be able to stay right of him and stay in, like, that little trough there. So I don't know. We're just going to have to wait and see uh, how the lanes get broke down, and then I'll have to make my decision based off that. EJ, congratulations. Thank you so much for your time. Way to go, man. Thank you. Randy, thanks. EJ, we can't wait for the championship match coming your way on CBS Sports Network. Our final four is set up. Third place, two-game match. Svensson and Simonson will go head-to-head. -head. And then for the title, also the two-game match, the defending champ, EJ Tackett, and the world's number one ranked player, Jason Belmonte. Be sure to join us next Tuesday, June 19th at Eastern as we crown the champion of the PBA Tour Finals from Thunderbolt Lanes here at Allen Park, Michigan. Now for my broadcast partner, Randy Peterson, and the entire CBS Sports Network crew, it's Dave Ryan saying so long for the PBA Tour Finals in association with the PBA.